Welcome to Heaven's Gate. Heaven's Gate is presented by Sunbasket. Between planning for the holidays and balancing the rest of your life, it sometimes feels like cheese and crackers is a totally acceptable dinner. That's why Sunbasket's here to help. Sunbasket makes it easy to stick your healthy habits and cook delicious meals at home. You pick from 12 weekly recipes that deliver organic and non-GMO ingredients right to your door. Everything is pre-measured and easy to prep. You can get dinner on the table in about 30 minutes. Choose from gluten-free, lean and clean paleo and vegetarian options. This holiday season, skip the grocery store and the parking lot madness. Discover how easy it is to cook healthy, clean meals with Sunbasket. Go to sunbasket.com slash gate today to learn more and get $35 off your first order. That's sunbasket.com slash gate for $35 off. sunbasket.com slash gate. Don't forget, you can find new episodes of Heaven's Gate one week early ad-free on Stitcher Premium. Go to stitcher.com slash premium. Use the promo code gate. Previously on Heaven's Gate. Everything in the cult was controlled. All of our emotions were under the watchful eye of our self-policing, following procedure every second of the day. Doe was wondering whether uh, his students would be as committed as those students were to David Koresh. He respected the students staying with it, even with the threat of death. I'd only been in the group maybe two, three weeks. With everyone in the room, he just asked each of us individually if we'd be willing to, to voluntarily, you know, end our life in this world. These were the days when there were other cults and other families would kidnap their relative, their family member from whatever group they were with and put them through deprogramming without their consent. I don't want to say that Heaven's Gate members were brainwashed. I don't want to say that they were uh, mind controlled. But I think we do have to admit that like any group, there was peer pressure. What is the biggest lesson of Heaven's Gate? That wonderful, idealistic, talented, educated people from very nice families can be deceptively recruited and subjected to powerful mind control techniques that make them into a new identity that's dependent and obedient. Did the followers of Heaven's Gate choose their fate? Or were they brainwashed? This man, Stephen Hassan, he's sure it's the latter. And as you'll hear, Hassan has spent more time around cult members than any of us are ever likely to. He's helped a lot of people leave their cults. But there's a problem with this word we're using. Brainwashing. Because brainwashing is very hard to define. And it might just be something we've come up with, like dark matter and physics, to answer questions that we can't grapple with otherwise. On today's show... One family struggles to understand why their brilliant daughter left them. We passed the inspection. We're allowed into California. We have no fruit, no plants, and no animals on board. And they hope they can bring her home. I can't believe that Gail would do that. And I said, I think we're going to get a call from Gail. Get me out of here. Get me out of here. And that's how I felt that in desperation, she was still alive. And maybe somehow she could get to us and get out of there. But, um, you no. Know. We knew better. This is Heaven's Gate, Episode 7, The Programming. I'll tell you who I am. T and Doe, whatever they want to call us. Whether or not you believe is up to you. you, you. We all have to deal with demons. We're trying to teach you how to prepare yourself. You are members of the next level. The next level. level. 
You know how in yearbooks, they give people little superlatives under their names, little glimpses into the possible future based on how they are in high school. Most likely to be president, most likely to be famous, but, but how about most likely to join a cult? What would that person look like? Awkward? Downcast eyes, maybe a little bit off? You could totally predict who that person would be, right? Well, the girl most likely to join a cult at Pearson High School in Sag Harbor, New York, class of 1987, would absolutely, totally not have been Gail Mater. This was her high school picture. Oh, Gail's beautiful. Thank you. We think so. Gail's got dark hair and a wide smile. She was always very tiny, 97 pounds. Gail's parents are Alice and Bobby Mater. They live in Long Island. In the summertime, we had a pool out here, an above-ground pool. It was always overflowing with the kids. We didn't even know where they were coming no, from. we didn't know where they were coming from. The Maters were the kind of parents who threw luau's in their backyard with hula skirts for all the neighbors, the kind of parents that made friends with their kids. And Gail, Gail just delighted them. I knew when she came in the door at night after school, somebody was behind her because she was being somebody home. And uh, so she's a very popular kid. And, and Boyfriends? Oh, God, yes. Some we approved of, some we did not approve of. <laughs> when Gail was 21, she moved to the West Coast with one of those boyfriends. This one was mother approved. Her and Chad, they lived, they got a little house up in the Redwoods, a little cabin. And uh, boy, they seem to be very much in love. Gail and her boyfriend settled in Northern California and they built a group of friends, hippie types. Gail was happy launching her life, but her family missed her. So when Gail decided to bring her 1965 Ford Mustang from Sag Harbor, cross country to California, her dad jumped at the chance to tag along. Here we go, headed for California. And Gail's dad brought a tape recorder along. Okay, got anything to say here, Gail? Say something to the folks back home. Anything to say? And if you're thinking that 3,000 miles in a Mustang with just your dad is kind of a lot, here we are at the world's largest McDonald's. It's neat. It's built right completely over the interstate. It's like a bridge. What do you think, Gail? Pretty neat. Mickey D does it up. Gail is giving zero eye rolls. She's having fun. The scenery is nice. Daddy's going to take a picture so you can all see it. Welcome to Oklahoma. Discover the excellence, it says. Oh, Oklahoma, where the wind comes sweeping down the plane. Hey, I didn't know you could sing before. Wait, well, you must have been taking singing lessons in California, huh? Yep. I know this girl. Don't you feel like you know this girl? Goofy, a little bit punchy from too many hours on the road, totally normal. And it's so hard to hear in Gail's voice, anything that says, yeah, I'm open to joining a doomsday cult. I must say it was really a pleasure going cross country with Gail. It was a lot of fun. She's a good traveling buddy of mine. I'll go anywhere with her, anytime. What do you think, Gail? Did you have a good time? Yep, I had lots of fun, but I'm glad to be home. That move toward joining a cult. It doesn't happen in a day. It's not a tidal wave. It's a slow drip. In California, outside Santa Cruz, Gail winds up owning a little shop she calls a Satori Caravan. You know, the turquoise earrings, drums, the hippie stuff. She likes the spirituality of it all. Somewhere in there, Gail meets another guy named Richard. They start dating and spending a lot of time together. They're hypothesizing about life on other planets, trying to make contact through crystals and copper wire. Around them, her friends start seeing less of her. When they do, Gail's looking ragged, worn out. 
like maybe she's not sleeping. But also around then, Gail heads home to Long Island for a cousin's wedding. Gail is Gail. And to her mom, Gail looks great. Everything's normal, except she's giving her stuff away. One day she had a big bag in, in, coming out of her bedroom, and I said, Gail, what's in the bag? She said, all my sweaters. I'm going to get rid of all my sweaters. And I said, I said, oh, okay, whatever. This is 1993. And after that, Gail goes back out west, and her mom has trouble reaching her. She gets worried. She calls Gail's friend and landlord. I call Sonny, and I said, any word from Gail? And she said, Gail and them have decided not to come back to California. And I said, where are they? She said, I really don't know where they are. They means Gail and this guy Richard she's been dating. And I went in after I hung up from her. I went in and and I woke him up and I said, do you know how easy she could slip through the cracks so we never know where she is now? And that's how it happens. Just like that, Gail is missing, out of contact with her parents for over a year. Then a couple of postcards arrive. Gail says she's fine. Don't worry. Great. But then nothing. For another few months. And then this flyer comes in the mailbox. We got a, a UFO flyer saying there was going to be a this UFO convention in Andover, Michigan. And on the back of the flyer, she had written a little note. I guess you're wondering what I'm doing. I met up with some friends. I'm fine-tuning my life. And I turned it over and I looked, and it was the end of a Michigan, but it had already happened. Alice didn't know what to do. She showed the flyer to her nephew, Carl, who was an RA at Hofstra University at the time. Maybe this was a college thing. Carl asked around, and then one day, the Maters got a phone call. And he said, uh, this is Paul Griswold. Griswold said he's an expert on cults, and there was no time to waste. Carl has just given me this thing. We're having a cult convention in Cleveland, Ohio. Your husband and you should get in the car and come, because you've got to start your education on cult. She is definitely in a cult. We went to that convention, and we learned a lot. It was mind-boggling. There were 500 people at this one convention, all of them with loved ones who had disappeared. We would split up into tables. Uh, Harry Krishnas, uh, the Moonies, uh, Scientology, and all these different ones, the Forum. Uh, and they didn't know where to put us because of the spaceship. So we went to some other table and we listened to their stories. Although the aliens set the Mater's group apart, there were still... A lot Alice and Bobby could learn. They looked for clues everywhere, even in the smallest places like how she signed her letters. And in every one of them, she always signed, love you, Gail. And everybody in the cult conventions would say, as long as she's saying I love you, she's remembering you. And she has not chose to split away from you. So that's a ray of hope. The Mater's biggest takeaway was that Gail wasn't in this group by choice, not really. Now, they felt sure that Gail was being brainwashed, and it was up to Alice and Bobby to break the spell. They just had to learn how. We had been to a cult convention in Queens. That's when we met Stephen Hassan, and we learned a lot from him. Hassan had written a book called Combating Cult Mind Control, and the Maters devoured it. One chapter explained exactly what to do if your kid calls you. First step, get the right equipment. Get a recorder for your phone. And if she calls, you know, punch it in and get the recording. And then use the conversation to pull your daughter out of her fog in ways big and small. Remind her who she is. Hassan has all kinds of tips for this. So the Maters prepare and they wait every day, hoping for the phone to ring. They wait for almost a year. 
So sure enough, Sunday afternoon, he was changing the oil in the car. I was getting ready to go to King Cullen. My mother was here then, she was alive. Her brother answered the call. Is anybody home that might want to talk to me? Yeah, they'll probably want to talk to you. Can you hold on a second? And he went out and he said to Bobby, do you want to talk to Gail? It's your daughter. But he said, you better not be kidding. They don't know where Gail is. They don't know how she is. They don't know how to call her back if she hangs up. So they figure, if they're going to get Gail away from Heaven's Gate, this call, this is their chance. Oh, when you're coming home. I don't know, probably never. Oh, no, Gary, you've got to come. The Maters give this call all they've got. And we listen to how Gail responds and what it might tell us about Heaven's Gate after the break. Support for today's show comes from Squarespace. Ready to start your new business? Make it stand out with Squarespace. With beautiful templates created by world-class designers, Squarespace makes it easy to turn your idea into a new and unique website. And we would know. We made our website with Squarespace. Head to heavensgate.show to check it out. You can showcase your work, your blog, publish content, even sell products and services of all kinds. In just a few clicks. Customize everything from the look and feel to the settings, the products. Use Squarespace's analytics to help you grow in real time. And not to mention everything is optimized for mobile right out of the box. With over 200 extensions to choose from, Squarespace offers a new way to buy domains. Best of all, there's nothing to install, to patch, or upgrade ever. Though if you do have a question, Squarespace's award-winning 24-7 customer support is there to help. A dream is just a great idea that doesn't have a website yet. Make it a reality with Squarespace. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, use the offer code GATE to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com, offer code GATE. We're back. Hello. Hi. Hi, how are you? Good. Good, where are you? Oh, you are? Uh-huh. Alice sounds cheery. Oh, okay, pretty good. Can't complain. But inside, she's strategizing. Yeah, we're moving, getting ready to take Danny to Florida. The Maters have been training for this moment. Following Steve Hassan's book, Combating Cult Mind Control, learning the techniques he gives for snapping a loved one out of it. The first big thing is the hardest. You can't do what every bone in your body wants to do. To scream and yell and cry until your kid promises to come to hell home right now. No, you gotta play it cool and guide your child gently, subtly toward reconnection. We was just trying to get into her mind and remind her of of all the love she had here and how she should come here. You can't tell them, you just have to plant the seeds of doubt that there's something wrong and let them figure it out. Okay, hang on, Grandma wants to talk to you. Hello, honey. Hello. Oh, when you're coming home. I don't know, probably never. Oh, no, Gary, you've got to come. I thought you'd say that. Grandma didn't get the memo about subtlety. Oh, I want to see you so badly. (laughs) Where are you? I'm in the Rocky Mountains. Oh, Oh, honey, I want to see you, so please come. Will you? I don't think so. Oh, yeah. Here, yeah, I guess your father wants to say something. Hi. Hi. How you doing? Great. How about you? All right. Well, trying to get her to come come visit or let us come out and see her or somehow get together with her. Remember, the Maters don't know where Gail is or how to reach her again. And that's what the group wants. At least at times, 
The members of Heaven's Gate were afraid that some deep programmer or a family member might discover their location and come crashing in and snatch people from the group. But Gail doesn't say any of that. Geez, we miss you, Gail. Would you like to come visit? I don't know. She just keeps the conversation vague. We're traveling all over the place. Yeah, where you been? Well, pretty much everywhere. Huh. Rocky Mountains right now. Huh. Apparently, there's some, her partner there was probably coaching her, you know. Because mm. every time he asked a question, it was a hesitation. She had to get permission from her. You know, they had uh, partners there, you know, and if you did something that the cult wouldn't like, they'd squeal on you. You know, you had to be careful. Jesus, it's certainly nice to hear from you. Yeah, very pleasantly surprised. Yeah, we, you know, we don't know what you're doing. We're worried about you. I'll buy you a ticket. <laughs> no, I'm happy here. Yeah. You can hear the warmth that Bobby's trying to convey. To remind Gail what it would feel like to be home. It's heartbreaking. Oh, we want to see you. I don't know what to say. Yeah. Can I meet you? Right now I can't. Why? It's not a good time. I'm in the middle of doing all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? Well, getting ready to probably head out of here because it's going to snow soon. It's yeah. It's cold. Still huh. got lots of the world to see. So where are you headed? Always south. Huh. Yeah, snow and cold. Yeah, but, you know, see if you can give us an address in case something happens here, we can at least let you know. Bobby's pushing as hard as he feels he can. And for a moment, it sounds like he's getting through. By golly, Gailey, we want to see you. I know. So please come see us. Okay, things might work out. I hope so. Gail changes the subject. Mommy yeah. She's here. She keeps grabbing for the phone. She wants to talk to you. Well, it's been great talking to you, Gary. And let us know. I'll be, I'll be glad to send you a ticket. Okay. Really. Because we want to see you. Okay. Spend, a, you know, whatever time you can up here. You can't be that busy. You can't see your family. Can you? I don't know. Oh, come on. Here's here's, here's Alice. Hi, sweetie. Hi. So, are you coming to go to Boca Raton with us? No. Oh, you should. Yeah, you should come because we want to go, you know, do Universal Studios. Remember when we went to Disney World last time? Alice adds another strategy from the Steve Hassan book. Get Gail thinking about the times she spent with them. When I talked to her about Disney... I said, why don't you come home for a trip, and why don't we go as a family trip and we'll go to Disney? I said, do you remember when you were at Disney for 10 days with Amy? Oh, sure. Danny was just a a little tight. Remember you went down with Amy and you spent the 10 days, and then you came back and insisted we take Danny down? And we ended up going down. We got halfway there, and Daddy said, Make up your mind because it's a long haul, and if you really want to go, we'll go. But if not, change your mind. You said, oh, no, no, you got to go, you got to go. Hang on a sec, let me see. Go, Danny, go back to the phone and see if that list is still hanging there, what I... I see it. No, go see if it's there. Alice made a list of family news in anticipation of the call. It's all meant to pull on Gail's heartstrings, to make her feel things about her family again. We have a new kitten. I told her that she you, that she might get to meet you someday. Her name is Sadie, and she's a gray and black, sort of gray, black, white angora. She's four months old. So, and she got uh, she got real long hair. She's but she's uh, loves Spanky. Panda fights with her. So, and um, the PJ passed away this fall. So that's why it left an opening sort of for Sadie. This this kitten. And a little white one was dropped off to Lisa and Carl. 
and uh, Carl let Lisa keep the one, and then a day later, this one showed back up. So Carl said, if you want, Carl and Lisa are going to stay with Grandma when we go to Boca Raton. Are you working? Uh, kind of. Yeah. What you up to? What are you doing? I'm working at the Burlington Coal Factory. Burlington Coal Factory? Where? Just stocking and stuff. Where is this, though? Near Denver. Oh. Oh, so you've been all over the place. And where are you now? Alice hasn't forgotten. Make sure she gets a location. We're still in the restaurant. Oh, yeah? Oh, who's we? We and the rest of the crew. Oh, yeah? Oh, that's good. What else is life offering you? We have new perspectives on things. Uh-huh. Expanding my consciousness a little bit. Oh, yeah? Well, that's good. So what kind of group are you with? Well, it's kind of, kind of like mom, I guess. Oh, really? It's the closest thing. Yeah. We're all celibate. Uh-huh. Oh, that's nice. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Gail's actually telling her parents something about her experience in the group, but the maters aren't trying to hear that. They want Gail thinking about anything else. Good. Are you eating well? Oh, yeah. You're not getting fat, are you? No. Good, good. <laughs> oh, Lisa misses you something terrible. She said, when is my Gail coming to visit me? Huh. So what can I, so you have an address or a phone number where I could get a hold of you if you need be? Not really. Grandma's 88th birthday's coming up soon. You know, and she really wants to see you. She's afraid she's never going to see you again. What's the name of this group you're with? Is there a name to it? Oh, Transfiguration Monastery. Oh, yeah? Oh, huh. As they talk, Alice and Bobby can feel their time with Gail slipping away. Hassan had warned families not to expect an extended conversation. The cults would not allow it. And it was 15 minutes, just as Steve's book said it would be. And then she said, I have to go now. So, okay, so listen, you're going to call again? Okay. Well, keep in contact, baby, because I love you so much and I miss you awfully. Alice makes her final pitch. I'd love to be able to grip. Hey, how about coming home for Christmas? Oh, uh, no, no Christmas? What are you going to do for Christmas? <laughs> but anyway, you know I'd love to have you here for Christmas. All right? I know. I know. Well, I love you so much, baby. And don't forget how much I love you. Okay. And we want you here with us. As first chance you can get, come home for a visit. Okay? Meet Sadie. Bye. Bye. I love you. Was that the last time you heard from your daughter? Yes. Mm -hmm. I said, will you call again? And she said, I'll call as long as you're happy when I call. And I said, Gail, I'm ecstatic when you call. I haven't heard from you in 11 months. I haven't heard your voice. And please call again. We'll be more than happy to hear from you. And that was the last time I heard. The Maters did everything they could. But it didn't work. Gail's allegiance to the cult, or its hold on her, was too strong. And looking back, the Maters doubt anything they could have done would have made any difference, because as they see it, though it put Gail so deeply under his spell, he'd filled her head with so much intergalactic nonsense that there wasn't room for Gail's own will in there anymore. Coming up, We'll find out what we know and what we don't know about mind control. And we'll hear what Gail herself had to say about it in a moment. Support for today's show comes from Birchbox, a company that was created for women by women as a better way to shop for beauty. Birchbox is a beauty subscription service that delivers five samples ranging from hair care, skin care, and makeup products to your door every month. Brands vary from well-known to indie, and each box is personalized based on the recipient's beauty profile. It's a great gift for any of the women in your life this holiday season because it's quick and easy. It always feels personalized. Plus, it keeps on giving. 
even after the holidays have come and gone. It's perfect as a last-minute gift as well. Simply download a beautifully designed certificate and gift it immediately. Or treat yourself and opt for monthly self-subscription. Gift subscriptions start at $30 for three months and are also available for six and 12-month periods. Gift today and save 20% off all gift subscriptions when you go to birchbox.com slash gate and use the offer code gate. But hurry, this limited time offer is only available through December 25th. Just go to birchbox.com slash gate. Use the offer code gate. We're back. By golly, Gally, we want to see you. I hope. So please come see us. Okay, things might work out. I hope so. So I have never heard that recording before, and it was tragic and sad for me to listen and to to know how much they love Gail and how much they were doing the best that they could 20 years ago based on the reading of my book to implore her to come and visit. This is Steve Hassan. The Steve Hassan who wrote that book on mind control, the book the Maders relied on almost as their Bible to try to get their Gail back. Hassan is a licensed mental health counselor and he's been trying to help people leave cults for more than 40 years. There's no question that they are desperate. It's it's tragic listening because they love her and and they know that she's in danger and they don't know even where she is. Hassan says Heaven's Gate is the prime example of mind control at work. It's a group that I use often in my work, especially when I'm doing interventions when I'm working with someone in a different cult and they say there's no such thing as brainwashing or mind control, and then I show them pictures of who the members were before they got into the cult. Images of people when they were just themselves, like Gail Mater. And she was just driving cross country with her dad. Oh, Oklahoma, where the wind comes sweeping down the plane. And then show them part of the exit videos where they're talking about, well, you may think that I'm brainwashed, but this is the smartest thing I've ever done. And the world is going to be incinerated and we're just evacuating. I have yet to have any client say anything, but those people are brainwashed or man, is that a cult? Yeah, just, you know, we're interviewing a number of people just to see a number of people express some interest in saying something on camera to the people that might, you know, get this tape. And uh, we just wondered, if, you know, if you had anything particularly you wanted to say to people. This is Gail's exit video, 1997. Exit videos were the group's last messages to the world. Although by 97, Gail's not Gail anymore. She's Iris Odie. Hair chopped off, standard Heaven's Gate uniform of baggy pants and shirt buttoned up to the neck. She's sitting on a white plastic chair in the yard of the San Diego mansion where she's about to end her life. Well, I just want to let everyone know how lucky and happy I feel to be here and let you know that what we're about to do is certainly nothing to think negatively. Uh, Gail as Iris Odie is calm and smiling, but clearly full of feeling. She sways back and forth a little bit as she speaks and looks around like, like you do when you're really trying to say what you mean. We're all choosing of our own free will. Go to the next level with T and Doe. And they are certainly not what the media is going to paint them out to be. I can tell you that Doe is... The most special, dignified, unhuman, objective person that you can ever meet. Mr. He has helped us so much and put up with so much and never done anything that <laughs> seemed even close to the way a human would respond. And I guess that's really all I want to say. <laughs> 
What a lot of people don't understand is just because the cult member says, I am happier than I've ever been in my life. Trust me, I know what I'm doing. Doesn't mean it's true. The Maters could not agree more. She was Apple White's puppet, you know? He pulled the strings and they did what he wanted them to do. I don't believe until the very end she was in control of anything. But saying Gail wasn't in control is complicated. We're all familiar with brainwashing, the idea that someone can take over your mind and fill it with whatever they want. But in fact, brainwashing may not really exist. Or if it does, it's incredibly rare. The term came from Maoist China and the thought reform campaigns in the 1950s. The word spread in studies of POWs in Korea in World War II, soldiers who were trapped against their will and tortured and put through extraordinary physical and mental coercion. These people came to say and do things they would never do in regular life. And then in the 70s and the 80s, when new religious movements like Heaven's Gate were scaring people, brainwashing was the word that reemerged to help explain how leaders like Jim Jones could hold so many followers in their swag. So my opinion is that we be kind to children and be kind to seniors and take the portion like they used to take in ancient Greece and step over quietly because we are not committing suicide. It's a revolutionary act. We can't go back. They won't leave us alone. But the problem is there's been a ton of research and in the end, all the leading medical and psychological associations have rejected brainwashing. As far as they can tell, there's no way to really empty a person's mind out and take it over. The core concept is flawed. It's probably not real. Sociologists have found over and over again that we use the word brainwashing not because there's evidence that it is real, but because it protects us from the alternative. How could we think that our brilliant daughter or our beloved father would make a choice to destroy themselves or to abandon us or to believe in something crazy, Jesus on a UFO? I know them. They would never do that. We have no answer. And brainwashing It gives us a place to put our blame and our rage on a leader. And now we have the authority to lay down this body. It is not ours. It has desires and impulses that are hideous to us. And when Stephen Hassan calls it brainwashing. Yes, there was brainwashing and mind control in Heaven's Gate. And while there is the illusion of choice, of agency, there really wasn't. Hassan's not speaking as a scientist or even a counselor might. He's also thinking about his personal experience. I'm a former member of the Moon Cult, and I was deprogrammed in 1976 after two and a half years. And after I left, I wanted to learn everything I could about brainwashing, mind control, hypnosis, and... Um, became an expert. Hassan fell into the moon cult in the 70s, and he went from reading widely all the time to reading nothing. He consumed only the ideas that his cult fed him, and he became a star recruiter. And if it wasn't for a freak accident when he wrecked a van and was in recovery for weeks, he thinks he might not ever have broken from his cult. Hassan feels lucky and grateful to be out and passionate to get others out of coercive situations. That's the perspective he brings to Gail Mater's story. I would challenge the notion that she joined consciously and knowing what she was getting into. I know that she broke up with her 
boyfriend prior to being recruited. I know that her boutique wasn't going so well, so she was situationally vulnerable. But I'm pretty sure that she didn't go in uh, going, you know what, I'm, I'm interested in joining a group. And joining assumes agency, as opposed to being recruited. I think I'd like to join a, a group so I can uh, never see anyone that I love again and uh, kill myself. Part of the power of recruiters is how much they are true believers. I know I was a very effective recruiter for the Moon Cult because I really believed it. So I could look people in the eye and talk in a very persuasive way that most you know, people would be like, whoa, this guy really is sincere. I get that, this projecting sincerity. Because when I was in the Worldwide Church of God, I know I sounded sincere because I sincerely believed. The organization, it provided an illusion of transparency, an illusion of dialogue and a freedom to think for yourself. They told us. They told me, go ahead. Look it up in the Bible. They told me it is all there. Well, eventually I did look it up in the Bible and try as hard as I might. I kept getting the wrong answers. I couldn't find the part where black people were cursed with the mark of ham. I didn't understand why license was given for slavery and search as I might, nothing. Nothing seemed to indicate that the end of the world was nigh. Still, for a long time, I thought I was the one reading it wrong. These invisible bars, constructed from years of conditioning, still held me prisoner. They kept me from my own freedom. Heaven's Gate told its followers that they were free too. Uh, they asked this question to everybody. Are you 100% sure? Are you really on board with this? Because if you're not, we'd like you to leave. This is Teo Altheises again. He joined Heaven's Gate in the 70s after hearing members of the group on a San Francisco radio station. It clicked for certain people. Like, this is my truth. This is, makes sense to me. And they joined of free will. And I remember there was a running joke about wanting to be brainwashed. It's just, please wash our brain of all these human thoughts and all these distractions. We want our brains washed. We want to be completely clean so we can be perfect, uh, you know, perfect servants and members of the next level. We, we want all this garbage out of our heads that's distracting us from making this change as quickly as possible. No, having no control over our decisions was... Part of the program is like when you join the military, you don't have control of your decisions. When you join uh, a corporation uh, that has certain rules, you don't have control over the decisions that you, you make while you're in that corporation serving that employer. That's Sawyer again. Sawyer says the group was on a mission that he believed in to get to the next level, to transform himself to be worthy. And so why wouldn't he want to take in all the ideas that Doe was teaching him. Though Sawyer left the group in 1994, he still believes. People say that I'm brainwashed, and I guess I am. You know, I guess it's a, it's a matter of who you, what you're brainwashed with. If, if you're brainwashed with the military cult, you know, we can be brainwashed to think that you know, we're... Uh, Serving God by uh, going, joining the military and fighting against Islam uh, because our God is better than their God. I never, I never stopped believing. I never did not believe that they were who they said they were and demonstrated to me that they were. Frank Lyford understands the belief, that intensity, that belonging, and he's grateful every day that he escaped it. For Frank... The legacy of Tian Do's powerful message is brokenness and sorrow and the absence of people like Gail Mater. Well, I can understand why the Maters feel the way they do, that it was one suicide and 38 murders. 
uh, because Doe did have ultimate control over all of his followers. But they also allowed themselves to be followers. They also gave their power away. It was a conscious choice for them to give their power away to Doe. And you can decide for yourself where you come down on this, whether the deaths, the exits were a conscious choice or coercion. But in the end, they still happen, and they leave people like Alice and Bobby Mater behind. The Maters live continually with Gail's memory. Every day you think about her, you know, what would she be like at 48? What would she look like now at 48? Would she still be 97 pounds? <laughs> I, I think of that when I see some of her friends, that were schoolmates and stuff. Yeah. Next time on Heaven's Gate, we'll hear some of your stories. Listeners have shared some amazing things connected loosely or directly to Heaven's Gate. And we'll also meet someone who knew Marshall Herf Applewhite, Doe, before Heaven's Gate was even a dream he had. I guess the actor part, uh, he did keep. He, he became a supreme uh, actor, able to turn his whole life into the role that he had made for himself. I get the collect call saying, daughter, I have made a terrible mistake and I need a place to come to. It's hard for me to even call it a cult because I feel so silly knowing that I fell for it. A couple of days went by as I was trying to hunt him down without much luck. And I said, mother, did he take any money with him? Yes, he cleaned out his account. And I said, how much was in there? And she said, between five and 6,000. And I said, mother, we're dealing with a cult. I'm a cult leader's granddaughter. I was raised to believe we were God's chosen people and I behaved accordingly. People say don't look back the past, but like Lot's wife, I have to look back. Heaven's Gate is produced by Stitcher in collaboration with Pineapple Street Media. Our team includes Ann Hepperman, Barry Finkel, Diane Hodson, Josh Gwynn, Osa Secker, Jess Hackle, Dan Tabirsky, Peter Clowney, Casey Holford, Jenna Weiss Berman, Max Linsky, and Chris Bannon. Special thanks to Ben Zeller. I'm your host, Glenn Washington. This show deals with some difficult topics, like suicide. And it can be hard for people to talk about suicide or get help if they're in danger. But all of us want you to know that help is available. One excellent resource is the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. It's free. It's confidential. It's available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The number is 1-800-273-8255. That number again is 1-800-273-8255. Or just remember, 1-800-273-8255 talk. Yeah. Now we'll have to make a copy of this so you can keep a copy of it. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I don't know if I really want one. <laughs> Stitcher. This is Katie Couric here to tell you about the latest episode of my podcast. Have you ever heard someone say, I just condoed my house? Well, you're not talking about their condo. They're talking about Marie Kondo. She, in fact, has made condoing a verb. She talks about learning how to weed things out of your life. I have a real problem with this, people. I don't know if you're like me. I'm a borderline hoarder, so this was very instructive for me. 
So in a way, Marie is the therapist too. So this is what I'm doing. It's true.、Um, I do, you know, what I'm actually doing is the tidying and cleaning. But when we look at the results, I'm often doing something more psychological as well. That's on the Katie Couric podcast, available on Stitcher or wherever you get your podcasts.